Hi guys, Toby here with a new video. And this video, we are going to talk about hero talents. And we have seen 12 new hero talents. And the uh, reaction from the PvP crowd has been pretty surprising. Um, I must say that I'm not surprised. People are like very afraid of new things. And whenever I was like making a video about hero talents, my concern was that it would not change too much on the playstyle. It would not feel like it would be something new, but like just pure, purely passives. And it would not change your playstyle and would not be exciting. And uh, from the 12 new ones that we got, it seems like it's very exciting. It seems a bit OP in PvP, but it seems like it's going to be fun to play. And uh, I think for me, the most important thing would be how uh, possible it is to play it in pvp so it, either it's op either it's going to be balanced or either it's going to be underpowered and in my opinion if it's balanced or op it's way better to um to balance it around than being underpowered because of like a pve mechanic because it's purely pve for example it would break cc or it would be not, not really usable in PvP situations, that would be a boring thing. And it's very hard to balance it towards PvP for that matter. But right now, those 12s were looking pretty cool, pretty fun, and uh, um, it's completely different from what we had the previous, the previous uh, hero towns, I would say. And um, so there is a lot of things that will have to change, probably. Uh, from the, the first ones because these ones are like completely uh, better in every regard than the first draft of uh, hero towns that we got now that's my opinion for the 12 hero towns that we got for uh, dk shamans warlocks even dh um, now i'm not going to talk about every single hero talent that's not going to be the, the goal of the video the goal of the video is actually talking about my hot take uh, based on the reddit posts that we have currently but also just also the um, hero towns that we got on Wohead. so if you want to check it out on Wohead, you can check it out i think i'll be making build videos once we have the alpha but uh, right now it's like pointless to talk because i think there is just no number so again I will, i'll be talking about like nothing about like air i don't want to play about that uh, so my hot take would be i actually like the new hero towns for pvp I was concerned that it would not be enough a uh, flavor but it but this seems to have enough playstyle changes to keep pvp interesting so this is my thing i i, I prefer to to have uh the game ever changing to the point where it's adding up and not really like taking away from um from shallons to dragonflight we got a new talent system which is good and then from dragonflight to war within we got hero talents which is going to add more depth towards the class that we have and people are concerned about balancing as if balancing wasn't always a problem in the pvp game so th this is, i really stand by it i think balancing will always be a problem the issue with balancing is how uh, little there is like if it's not often enough to keep it fresh to keep the meta moving then it will be feeling like very bad like for example the dh meta that we are currently in it's very hard to to appreciate it whenever it is like two months long and we know that right now we just need balancing any balancing and that is the problem with balancing if it is not done like attempting to balance then it feels bad but being concerned about a play style or uh, hero towns that are going to come out without like knowing how it's going to be in pvp because they might like slash it in two for example it would be minus 50 percent in pvp it could be also minus 75 percent in pvp it could also just not be usable in pvp sometimes because it's not outdoors or whatever or it would be a break cc again balancing we'll have to know it in alpha and beta and we will have to give feedback to the devs but that's our job to give feedback to the propositions that they have because they have it in their mind. It's very hard to uh, crack down their own ideas um, if we're not going to give feedback. Again, I'm not really hopeful about like real heard feedback because it's just how it is. They, they did that for Dragonflight as well. But uh, at least if it's keeping changing and it's going to be 
patches and on hot fixes and uh, balancing, then I think it's not a problem. I think if people really want a balanced game out of World of Warcraft, like a purely balanced game with no balancing changes because it is a balanced state, it will never happen. Never. It never was and was never the case. So we are already like in 11.0 in War Within. So it means that we have like 10 or 11 expansions. I don't even know anymore. It was never balanced. So people should stop cons be concerned about balancing, like balance the state, and be more concerned about the rate of balancing, which is the most important thing for a PvP game. If it's balanced, if we get balancing patches every two weeks, every three weeks, every week, then it would be that the meta is ever changing and you, you would have your turn. For example, Enhancement Shaun, I feel like I never had my turn in Dragonflight. It would have been good to have one day like a good balancing patch for enhancement shaman and i don't i'm not asking for op i'm asking for an attempt to make it more balanced and that's actually what i like about pvp that it's always going to be moving for example that's why i like league of legends if i play red Acton, i could be doing very well because of items because of the champion and the balancing changes every two weeks, so it could change any time. Also, my matchups, if like a counter of mine is getting nerfed, then it means that I'm going to be better. And that's also working for World of Warcraft. So that's what I like about PvP. People don't quit games because it's too complicated. And that, I stand by it. I think people are concerned about complicated uh, kits and people leaving the game because it's too complicated and PvP is too complicated, too hard to learn. I think they're wrong. I think the, the thing that makes people leave the game is because it's unrewarding, not fun, predictable, and the meta is still. So that those are the reasons why people leave the game. If they are not having fun, if it's predictable because the meta is like full DH and every single game you're going to have has a DH or a Warlock, for example. Uh, or the meta is still because there is lack of balancing, lack of balancing again, not lack of that it be, is balanced, but lack of attempt of balancing the game and rewarding because they are not adding more rewards towards PvP and some people really need the carrot on a stick to be always moving towards a goal. And again, that's the, the reasons why people leave or because it's too hard to go in because you, you need gear and you have to PVE, you have to uh, PVP for uh, 10,000 hours to get like the best gear. That would make people leave. But in Dragonflight, that's not the case. I think you can have honor gear pretty, pretty easily on one day. Conquest gear is a bit harder, but again, you, you can work towards it and it doesn't take like two weeks to get like full Conquest gear if you're playing like normally. Uh, I would say like even two hours a day, you could really like gear up very quick. And in War Within it will be even faster because they are going to remove vaults or the, the conquest gains are going to be higher. So you could also buy more pieces. But o overall, people are not leaving because it's complicated. People can learn. People are flexible. Some games are super complex and still have m new players. I think Dota 2 is way more complex than World of Warcraft and still has new players going into it. League of Legends, I think, is more complex to learn. Um, it, 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 the, the entry level is very easy, but once you have like ranked and how it plays, uh, people actively try to learn it. You have also YouTube videos, you have tutorials, you have whatever is available to you to learn. People are ready to learn if it's worth it. And how do you make it worth it? By making it rewarding, being fun, being unpredictable, and the meta not being stale. Okay? Uh, so lack of balancing, not that it actually gets balanced one day, which will never happen. So that's uh, that's always going to be my take. People that try and want a game that is going to be balanced, will it's it's a fairy tale. It's never going to, to happen. And I don't think you want, would like to want that. Um, if it's really balanced, it means that every single spec has the same kit and the same um, response to certain problems. And then it becomes just like a skin game where a warlock is the same as a mage, but like the one is throwing green spells and one is throwing more frosty spells. It, it's, again, it's a you think you do, but you don't situation. Uh, I'll make a discussion video about it. So that's a video, discussion video I'm going to make right now. I did read a lot of negativity and that's the reason why I make this video. Uh, more for me, again, more options, 
more fun, more of an ever-changing meta, and it is also more diversity. Staleness is boring, and I would be disappointed if my class plays the same in Dragonflight than in War Within IMO. And that's true for a lot of classes. Again, if Frost Decay plays the same as in Dragonflight, I would be hugely disappointed, because I think Frost Decay in Dragonflight is not fun. I think it could be way better. Same for Enhancement Shaman. If they don't change anything about Enhancement Shaman in War Within, I would be very disappointed. As even for Fury Warriors, I would say Arms Warrior just needs like more more depth. I would say same for I think DH. They, they need they need something to tone down, but they could also have more depth. Same for BM Hunter. I would like to have more buttons than just like a barb shot and kill command, uh, like damaging wise. Um, I want things to be extra, not like that you are like doing the same as previous expansions and also not like you are taking things away from me uh, without compensation. Again, whenever I'm saying like you need to remove uh, a certain stun for the age or you have to nerf certain things, I'm also li like a uh, defendant of if you remove something, you have to compensate it somewhere. And uh, I think if you compensate somewhere, then I'm, 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 I'm fine. But if you're just removing stuff, you're just making it m less fun for the people that play that certain class. Now, let's talk about a Reddit post and how stupid it is. Again, Reddit is not that great, but I'm going to move my camera so you can see. Reddit is like filled of people being negative because again, it's easier to voice negativity than positivity. And I am also guilty of that. I have multiple negative videos, but I try to give feedback. I try to give like a solution. Some things are like, I think stupid, but whatever. For example, uh, just checking out the recently announced talent trees and holy moly, it's all over the place. I just can't see a company that failed to balance the current talent trees, balance the absolute broken mobility CC skills coming with these new hero specs. The new talent trees are so disproportionate when compared and clearly designed only thinking about PvE. Now it is designed about PvE but it will probably also about fun I think. They are like setting up a, a fantasy and they are going to try to make it the best that it is possible to have fun wise. That's how they, their, their goal is. I think it's also the, the, a great step towards that. Competitivity and balancing always comes afterwards. You cannot balance something first and then make it come out because you, you lose way too much time. Balancing takes way more time. And you have to see and implement that spell into the kit and then see how it reacts with the kit and then react around the environment of PvE and PvP and see how it goes. You cannot really balance something and then hope it's going to be balanced before testing because maybe you would have wasted so much time on something so tri trivial which is balancing balancing always comes afterwards always in any games and again i try to also give my reasoning behind it i'm not saying like you're bad your take is bad i'm also giving you why it is bad for example, here, I would imagine that they put zero thoughts about how they interact with PvP. I don't think so. I think they do, but they, they are going to balance it afterwards. Something that is 75% might be cut in half or in three to have something balanced. Uh, they're 100% more concerned with the aspect of the game over PvP, which is just a side mode at best. But such, at the end, it is true, but I do think that y you guys, the people are very negative about it. Again, I'm not thinking like everyone is going to be like this, but you have to think about fun first and how it's going to interact with your kit. And yes, you can be concerned about your class not having great hero talents compared to others. That's a legitimate a concern that you could have. Like, for example, I feel like uh, the, um, the BM ones are not that great, in my opinion. I think it's very boring. It feels like a force set to me. But that can always be changed because of feedback. Now, that's my take. It could be a very fun for someone else. But you have to understand that devs, you have specific devs that work for specific stuff. I think there is a, like a Druid dev, there is a Warlock dev, you have like a DK dev that is also working on a different spec 
or a different class and so on and so on. So not every dev is equal to each other. Some people are more creative. Some people are more um, um, in the logical aspect or they're thinking a bit too much about the balancing. So that's why it feels like it's a lot less fun. Everyone is thinking differently. So if like a class has a great hero talent and very fun and very OP and someone else has more of a logical step to hero talents and it's a bit less fun but more practical and way easier to balance, it is what it is at the end of the day. That's why you have like teams of devs that can work together but a warlock dev is not going to change talents from warriors. That's how I see. That's how they did in Dragonflight. You have different devs that were working on different talent trees. So I assume they have like a goal together, but some people think a bit more like in the future where they say, look, I can make it OP, but it will be not be practical because it's way easier, way harder to balance. So I'm going to make it more balanced, a bit less fun, but at least it's easier to tune. Th that's the issue that we have in hero talents, but that's completely different with balancing or whatever. And people are concerned about balancing on a th something that is not even in alpha. Again, I think people should be concerned about the PvP systems. That is a legitimate concern. That's something you could actually voice right now. That's something you could say, but PvP systems, where are we going to talk about it once? That is something you could talk, but Hero Talents, it is a feature for next expansion. They're not going to remove it for PvP. They're going to implement it for PvP and then balance it in around. Um, again, they, those, those devs, yeah, 100% PvP is effed. Come on, man. It's not even in alpha. How can you how, how can you be that certain that it is ruined in PvP? Also, I'm also a proponent of thinking that if something is OP and everything is OP, then nothing is OP. Now, balancing should be happening. I think there is like a few talents that are a bit OP. Let's be real. I think it's this one. Like uh, the aura of enfeeblement, where uh, like all enemies within 10 yards is going to be affected of curse of weakness and curse of tongues. I'm going to be honest, a warlock is not going to stand 10 yards from a healer. They're going to be 10 yards from a melee, so curse of tongues is not going to be very effective uh, towards those guys. 10 yards is really, really close. Like it's, it's nearly a auto attack range. But it's still going to be real balanced in PvP. I think in PvP it's going to be halved or even uh, like... Again, it's at 75% effectiveness. Curse of Tongues, I think it's like 20%, I think, in PvP right now. So 75% would be 15% or like close to that. I'm not even calculating right now, so I might do and say stupid things. But I think... Again, people are concerned about things that should not really be a concern right now. I think the concern would be, like, are those talents fun to play, first and foremost? Is it something you're going to play around if you're PvPing? And then see if the balancing is alright. Guys, again, you could be concerned about a lot of stuff. I think PvP-wise, we are not like, we were the black sheep. It is what it is. They're not going to make, like, a huge... Uh, fire chat, whatever, how it's called, like a fireside chat about PvP. They're not going to do that. They're not going to talk 20 minutes about PvP and how they see about PvP in the future, like they would do for Mythic Plus or for raids. It is what it is. We like World of Warcraft PvP for what it is. But I'm going to say, I'm going to have a lot of fun. I think playing a warrior with the Slayer talents, it feels really fun. If I'm going to play also, Fury Warriors are going to get Bladestorm again, so I'm very excited about it. Uh, that, 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 that would make Fury Warrior have a lot less problems uh, in PvP, for example. But um, I think it's hugely fun to play around that, and you can change whatever you want. So you could play uh, Slayer, or you can play the Colossus, or you can play Mountain Thane if you're a Fury Warrior. You have the tools to, to have fun. And I think that's the main concern you should have uh, going into War Within. Is it going to be fun? Is it going to be practical? Is it going to be something you would like to do in PvP? And then you can see, okay, how can we balance it? How can we make it less frustrating for the enemy team? 
how can we like if it's a AOE stun, is it going to be a reduced AOE stun instead of like a four second stun? It would be a two second stun, for example. They could do something like that, but people should realize that right now the concern about War Within and the Hero Talents are not about balancing. You, the, the numbers right now are not what is going to be final. It could be 10%, but it could also be at the end of the day 25%. It is reducing 10% um, of cooldown of overpower, which is really bad. That This is a really bad talent, for example. So they would probably make it 20%. That's true, 10% overpower is really bad. I think it's one second. It's, it's not good. But then you have another one, which is like Slayer Strikes have a chance to reset the cooldown of Blue's Blood Test and Overpower. Which again, is very, very fun. But again, you, 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 have, to, you, you have to realize, um, right now, people are concerned about things that are like really a non-issue. I think people should talk about how PvP will be in War Within. And then how the gameplay will be because we're like too far away. Like it's not even alpha. Nobody has it in their hands. Maybe it's not even OP. Maybe it's going to be tuned for PvP anyways. That's the concern. Again, everyone would like to see like a big PvP talent tree. Where you could do stuff. But we're not going to get that. So right now we have hero talents which is very flexible. You can play around it. And I think... <coughs> I think the choices are limited anyways if it's going to be break if if it's going to break CC or not it's going to be a non factor for example but um again please do not get concerned about stuff that is not of importance balancing is really something that happens at the end if you're concerned right now without like having the alpha you're going to have a bad time because you're always going to be concerned uh, personally I would like to see the real talent trees for War Within, not the hero talents, but the real ones, and see if they change Frosty Case, if they change Enhancement Chance, if they change Fury Warriors. That is what I want to see, and see, look, am I going to have fun playing that class? And then I'm going to be concerned about the competitivity of that class. But I think, again, fun is what makes people stay, really. Like fun, systems, rewards, I think the gameplay is really good. Uh, I think that's not like the problem. I think also like balancing, if it's recurrent and happens a lot, then it will like be enough to keep people inside the game. If the MMR system is not punishing but rewarding and wants you to push towards the top, then it's going to be way better and it will be way more fun to keep on playing. If seasons are shorter, that would be something great. Like I said in the previous video, See, for sure, seasons would enhance the uh, popularity and the uh, engagement of that those player base. But we'll have to know that once War Within is going to come out in alpha or in beta. So again, thank you for watching this video. I know it's more of a discussion video, but I wanted to talk about it because a lot of people are concerned about Hero Talents, which I am not currently. Uh, I was concerned in uh, previous videos where I was concerned about the fun factor of Hero Talents. And I got really what I desire, like again, if I'm playing Warlock, it seems fun to have like an instant dot on a Destruction Warlock with Shadow Flame. I think it's going to be fun to play around that. Uh, also, I think it's also going to be fun as a Farseer Shaman, where your Primordial Wave is going to have an Ancestor that is going to uh, cast a similar spells as you, although it seems like Holy Wards from um, like Divine, divine um, uh, Images from uh, Holy Priests. But um, we'll have to see. It does look like that. It's it, like monks. I don't really know too much about it. Uh, I, I think pack leader is all right. I don't think it's really fun. I think it's more of a four set kind of thing. I heard only positive things about feral druids about this druid of the claw thing. So I'm excited about that as well. I think the H's they are not really happy about this. Uh, that's true. And Rider of the Apocalypse really feel like if it's possible to be mounted while combat, I'm going to have fun with it. But again, we'll have to see. So again, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate you. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And we will catch you all probably very soon in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.